Yo, that's a pretty sweet oil stain on the driveway. Right on. What's up, guys? It's Drifts and Lifts here. All right, so today's a pretty fun episode. Um, finally, I'm gonna go for a rip and miss huff. Uh, I got my new GoPro 5 that I'm actually filming on right now. Um, so yeah, I'm, I got my uh, suction cup mount. I'm gonna mount it to the side. I know you guys really wanna hear miss huff. Uh, and Tay Tay actually uh, mentioned in the comments last video that you guys haven't heard miss huff yet. So uh, I was like, yeah, that's a good point. Let's go for a rip. So, um, but last video, I said I would do a Q&A. So uh, I'm gonna go through a bunch of comments on the last video and just kind of answer them as I can. Um, so yeah, let's let's do that first before we go for rip and miss half. So uh, DVY, if Volvo did not exist, what would be your drift car? That's a pretty tough question. Um, if Volvo didn't exist, what would be my drift car? Uh, there's a couple on my mind, but I want to say BMW E34 535. Uh, I really like four-door stuff. Um, I'm kind of over the S chassis and that kind of thing. I, I don't know. I like doing stuff a little bit differently. So uh, I have always really liked the E34s and the 535 is a really good motor. So I'd probably do that or maybe an E36. That's another budget, good budget car. Um, BMW's got a lot of stuff. Even E46s are getting pretty cheap these days. So I might consider one of those even. Um, so yeah, if I had a lot of money, a JZX 90 to 110 Chaser uh, or a Mark II, that would be my favorite. Um, I love those cars. They're super beautiful, but they're super expensive here in Canada. So yeah, no, I'm going to stick to the Volvos. All right, Tay Tay, uh, it's funny, the first time after a long time you bought something other than a Volvo and it's already having problems. When will we hear Miss Huff? We haven't, or we basically haven't heard her after the head job. Um, I know, right? Yeah, first thing I buy is already having problems. Uh, pretty shitty. So when are we gonna hear her after the head job? That is uh, right now. All right, back to the action here. Reckless Turbo 245, if you're doing a Q&A, what do you not like about 240s? Um, I'm assuming he's speaking 240 Volvo, of course. There's not a whole lot I don't like about them. I prefer the 740. I know I always joke that 740s are better, but I'm just joking around. Um, everything's an opinion, really. So if you like a 240 or you like a 740, to each their own, really. Uh, what I don't like about them, I mean, when I, when I've driven quite a few 240s actually, and the chassis doesn't feel quite as planted. It may be because uh, uh, the suspension in the ones that I've driven hasn't been the greatest. Um, the narrowness, just the look of them more or less, uh, I, just, I prefer the 740. Um, there's more for cheaper. I don't like the, the enthusiast price that the 240s sometimes go for. Uh, people, it's like the classic Volvo 240, so they ask like a pretty penny for them a lot of the time, but whereas the 740, people are throwing them out left, right, and center. So that's why I've had so many cheap ones and you can get the 740 with the turbo way more common. The 240 turbos are super rare now. So yeah, that's, that's basically it. Um, 740s, yeah, I just prefer 740s more or less. Um, Tormod Frafjord. Have you ever considered buying a 960? Cheap enough to 2.9 liters, 204 horsepower stock. I have considered buying a 960, but being there are no manual 76 or 960s in Canada or the United States, um, that's just not really an option. So we'd have to go through the whole mess around of getting a, an inline six M90 and all that yada yada. There's no point. Uh, cool cars though. Um, also the independent rear suspension, I prefer the solid axle. It's a lot easier to get drifting. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. What's your, okay, so Green Leaf 5656. Hey Colton, your, video, your videos inspired me to get a uh, 7 Series Volvo. Congrats, uh, Green Leaf. I'm glad I could influence you into one of these dirty bricks. Um, I re just recently picked up an 88 760 turbo intercooler. What's your opinion on the 760s? 760s are the same as a 740 and a 940, very similar. Other than the fact that it has the independent rear suspension uh, with the sedan. So if you have a wagon uh, 760, that's going to still be solid axle. Um, 
but yeah, they're they're good. They're they're cleaner, more luxury than uh, than the 740s were from the factory. So they're basically the same car though. Um, I like the front ends on them sometimes. Uh, they have like the 940 front ends. Yeah, they're they're sweet. Yeah, I would I would do one up. Um, I just haven't I haven't really come across any over here that I really wanted to buy. So, um, but yeah, keep on trucking, Greenleaf. Uh, glad you got into Volvos. That's sweet. Joe uh, Johan Albertson, you run coilovers on Miss Huff. Uh, yes, I do in the front, not in the rear. I have aftermarket shocks and stock wagon springs in the rear. Uh, I do have coilovers on the front. They're more like a budget a budget setup. It's kind of like a custom coilover. It's like an aftermarket spring and then a Bilstein HD into a stock Volvo tube with uh, like spring mounts kind of mounted on the stock Volvo strut tube so the coilover can fit. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of a budget setup but it has Bilstein HDs with uh, stiff shocks in it so it feels pretty good. Um, I like it. All right, Michael Benson, what's Drifts and Lifts occupation? Is he a mechanic? Um, I have worked as a mechanic at places, but uh, actually uh, I don't have a solid occupation right now. I don't work like, you know, a full-time job and stuff like that. Um, I do painting a lot on the side for my buddy. Uh, we, you know, cash deals, cash deals, kind of that kind of thing. So I, I, I make my money from a bunch of different places, let's just say. Uh, no drugs though. Just kidding. <laughs> okay. Max Gill Gillespie, so he's got so many questions. I'm gonna to try to answer them all real quick. So Max is asking, he has how many questions? He has 10 questions, man, that's, that's some questions. All right, uh, what advice could you give for drifting sponsorships? None, because I've never had one, so uh, no advice there. Uh, uh, if I were to try to get one, I'd say, make a Instagram and YouTube and try to show your skills off. I don't know, man. Yeah, I'm just uh, sponsoring myself here. So he has a 740 turbo wagon. Would you advise cut springs with quick steer roll correctors or coilovers? I would definitely advise coilovers, but a lot of the time for people, that's not an option due to funding. So uh, cut springs is not optimal. But, you know, uh, for the longest time, like as you guys know, Goldie had cut springs on it, still does. A lot of my Volvos over the years have had cut springs and I have put them through their paces with cut springs with no problems. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. You know, people hate on cut springs, blah, blah, blah. But uh, in my, you know, cut three springs off the front, as long as your, uh, your mounts are gonna stay in place, you're good to go. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, are you considering a hydro e-brake? Uh, do you have a handbrake drift mod for the stock one? I am considering a hydro e-brake. Uh, me and Aaron actually have brackets that we made um, and I'm gonna be installing those, but the reason I haven't yet is just because the stock e-brake still works. Uh, what you, as far as mods for the stock one, I don't do anything to the handle. I hate when people put big, big like metal poles that like welded onto the stock e-brake handle. You don't even need that. Like it's, it's just silly. It's kind of ricer in my opinion. Um, oh, it keeps on reloading on me. But what I do is I take the stock pads off the rear, and, like the e-brake shoes, and uh, take the rotor off, and I take really gritty sandpaper and just sand them down and put brake cleaner all over them, just so you know they're, um, they're gonna be grabbing like they should. Uh, Miss Huff's e-brake still works pretty darn good. How would you set a cam gear in IPD turbo cam for drifting? Um, in Goldie, we found the best setting to be straight up, so we didn't advance it or retard it at all. Uh, I like that the most, because when you advance it, it generally puts your power in the lower RPM. Uh, retard it will put your power up higher. Um, yeah, we kind of found the sweet spot was right in the middle, so we didn't actually run an IPD adjustable cam gear. So yeah, um, that's, it depends on your setup, really. Um, there's so many different setups, right? But I, I would say straight up, a lot of people like that. Uh, why did you stray from Nissan S chassis uh, to do something different and I got like my first Volvo I ever got was a manual M46 turbo wagon with an IPD turbo cam and IPD springs and sway bars. The thing was sick. I paid like 1800 bucks for it back in like five years ago now. Um, but yeah, that got me hooked on Volvos as you could tell. Like uh, I went from an RB25 S13 and then I got in that thing and it was like pretty much just as quick, you know, with the boost cranked up to 13 pounds. Like, 
uh, I was I was definitely hooked on the Volvos once I got that car. So uh, this started this whole this whole mess here. Um, MLS a regular head gasket for twenty pounds. Uh, regular because Goldie's been had twenty five pounds on it and no worries yet. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it unless your head gasket actually blew. You ever come to Calgary? I feel like me and Marcus are the only Volvo guys out here. Uh, eventually, I'll, I'll get to that. Don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll meet up sometime. What coilovers are on Miss Huff? I answer that. Uh, any advice on not blowing an M46? I like that one uh, because people, you know, that maybe they, maybe they've been blowing their M46s up due to really really harsh driving. Uh, when I drift on my M46 cars, I try not to rev the crap out of it and drop the clutch. Uh, you know, like do crazy hard clutch kicks and stuff like that. Uh, advice for keeping it, weight reduction. That's actually going to hold, that's actually going to help your transmission stay intact better than a lot of things. Uh, if you remove 500 pounds from your car, when that torque load comes on, uh, that's so much, the, it, the, the, the force is going to go into propelling your car rather than your car holding back and the trans, you know, it's just less, less stress on the transmission, less weight. Um, that's basically it. And would you ever enter your car in a show as like a sleeper? Uh, would you do a tuck shaved bay on a Volvo? Uh, probably not, not as a sleeper. Miss Huff is definitely not a sleeper. It looks pretty race car now, um, you know. But uh, tuck shaved bay, that would be cool. Miss Huff, I tried to like clean it up a little bit. Uh, we tried to get, you know, things not looking. It's pretty tidy under here. I wouldn't do like a tuck shaved like Volkswagen fanboy swag yo bay, but uh, you know. That'd be cool, that'd be cool. Okay, where, where are we? Uh, what about E30s? E30s are sick, I just, you know, I've accumulated all these Volvo parts, so I'm gonna keep Volvoing. Uh, that's from E30 boy, answer that, or ask that question. Um, all right, Ludicrous Films, my good friend, Vigar. Uh, Q&A, when are you coming down to Washington for a drift event? Soon, uh, in the next month or so, we're hoping to get down there. Uh, why a CD009 instead of a T5 tranny, and where do you get the kit? Uh, so CD09s, it's more superior to a T5 tranny. Uh, it's just it's newer. It is uh, it holds more power. T5s I've heard have a tendency to uh, grind gears, higher RPM shifting. So they're not super great once you get them up to you know 70 or even 6500 RPM. Uh, in a stock Fox body, it never would have been revved past like five or whatever, right? So um, yeah, T5s are good though still, it's not a big deal. Uh, where do you get the tranny kit? Um, D-Works, I believe. D-Works, yeah. Yeah, so he makes the adapter kit, uh, which is super sick. Will you ever record street drifting again? No, very unlikely, unless I go down to Washington, which I'm actually going to do today. Uh, I'm going to drive across the border and I have a couple secret spots that I'm going to go hit there because uh, I can't do anything in Canada here. So. Um, how's life? <laughs> Thanks, man. It's uh, it's pretty good. I gotta say, uh, life is life is good. I got a sweet ass Volvo to drive in every day, and the Cummins is good, but the tranny is uh, needs new input shaft bearings. So we just pulled that out yesterday. I gave it to my buddy Mike. I just ordered an input shaft bearing kit. Uh, sorry, a full bearing kit. We're gonna install that. Cummins will be back on the road, and life will be freaking mint. Um. So yeah, thanks, uh, thanks Ludicrous Films for that question. Uh, re re revise TV. Uh, what is, what's the meaning of life? Man, I've been trying to figure that one out, you know, these uh, all these years, smoking that reef, sitting there. What is the meaning of life? Not too sure. I haven't figured it out yet. So
got back into Cholak from Washington. <laughs> so uh, I got my buddy here, Chris Check. He's, he's not gonna burn out in his Caprice. <laughs> yeah! Oh, fuck. <laughs> this is my good friend Jared's Camaro. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see a video of this thing. It's pretty raunchy. It's got like a built 350 in it, and uh, it's got line lock. He's gonna do a fucking big burnout right now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Man, the Caprice did a pretty good burner. <laughs> 305 power. <laughs> yeah, one tire fire, 305 power. <laughs> All right, guys, so that's a wrap up of the video. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe for loose Volvo corn holes. Uh, lots of stuff to come for the channel, so make sure you check it out. Um, yeah, more and more Volvo Hoon.